Welcome to our time of worship together today. My name is Paul Mitchell. I am the Rector of St Luke's Anglican Church in Toowoomba. We're happy to be able to have you with us wherever you are around the world or around Australia or even here in Toowoomba. We hope that this will be for you an opportunity to be able to draw closer to God, to be able to encounter and experience God in your life, to know that you are loved and cherished. Thank you for being with us. Good morning and welcome to our time of worship together today. This morning we are doing our uh, recording from All Saints in East Toowoomba. If you also watch on the day, then it may be that you see that the service is coming live on Facebook from a different place. The wonders of modern technology to do things in different ways, in different places, at different times. Welcome to our time of worship together as through the wonders of modern technology, we are able to join together wherever we are in this time of worship, in this time of gathering together, gathering closer to God and closer to one another as we pray and sing and join in this time. Please join with me as we sing together, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me. Thank you. 
You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. St Paul wrote to the Romans, The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Dear friends, the Scriptures urge us to acknowledge our sins and not to conceal them from God our Heavenly Father, but to confess them with a penitent and obedient heart so that we may be forgiven through his infinite goodness and mercy. We ought always to admit our sins before God and especially when we come together to give thanks for the good things we have received at his hands, to offer the praise that is due, to hear his holy word, and to ask what is necessary for the body as well as the soul. Therefore let us draw near to the throne of our gracious God as we pray together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone what we ought to have done, and we have done what we ought not to have done. Yet, good Lord, have mercy on us. Restore those who are penitent, according to your promises declared in Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant, most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live godly, righteous, and sober lives, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has no pleasure in the death of sinners, but would rather that they should turn from their wickedness and live. He has given authority to his ministers to declare to his people who repent the forgiveness of sins. God pardons all who truly repent and believe his holy gospel. And so we ask him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit that what we do now may please him, and that the rest of our lives may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Open our lips, O Lord, and, and we, we shall, shall declare your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O, o Lord, Lord, make haste to help us. us. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We say together Psalm 95, the Venite. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands moulded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Today, if only you would hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as Israel did in the wilderness when your forebears tested me, put me to proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I loathed that generation, and said, It is a people who err in their hearts, for they do not know my ways, of whom I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now, and forever. Amen. I now invite Anne Dashwood to read for us Psalm 13. Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you so utterly forget me? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I suffer anguish in my soul and be so grieved in my heart day and night? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me, O Lord my God, and answer me. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep in death. 
Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed. Lest my foes exalt at my overthrow. Yet I put my trust in your unfailing love. O oh, let my heart rejoice in your salvation. And I will make my song to the Lord, because he deals so bountifully with me. Thank you, Anne. I now invite Robin Diltry to read for us from Genesis. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 22, reading from verses 1 to 14, the command to sacrifice Isaac. After these things, God tested Abraham, and he said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. And he said, Take your son to your, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We shall worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked together and Isaac said to his father, Father, he said, here I am my son. And he said, the fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamp for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay a hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Thank you, Robin. We now say together the song of the church, the Te Deum. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as the Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Lord Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. I now invite Bob Dealtree to read for us from Romans chapter 6. 
The second reading today is taken from Romans chapter 6, reading from verses 12 to 23. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law but under grace. What then should we sin because we are under law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. And that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage do you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of these things is death. But now that you have been freed of sin, and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Bob. We now join in singing When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Thank you. 
I now invite Alan Rennick to read for us the reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10. Reading from Matthew, chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of the righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Here ends the reading. May these words be spoken and heard through the power and love of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. There is an amazing diversity of greeting customs around the world. In Tibet, the internet tells me, sticking out your tongue can be a way of welcoming people. In our house, this is usually reserved for really bad dad jokes or friendly banter type situations. In New Zealand, Maoris greet each other by touching noses. Ethiopian men touch shoulders and in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, friends touch with foreheads. In many Asian countries, people bow to each other when meeting. And in some European countries, as well as Arab countries, hugs and kisses on the cheek are more the norm. While this wasn't always true, the most common physical way to greet people around the world is now the handshake. The history of the handshake dates back to the 5th century BC in Greece. It was a symbol of peace, showing that neither person was carrying a weapon. Then during the Roman era, handshakes were actually more of an arm grab. It involved grabbing each other's forearms to check that neither had a knife hidden up their sleeve. Some say that the shaking gesture of the handshake started in medieval Europe. Knights would shake the hand of others in, attempt, in an attempt to shake off any loose hidden weapons. So what began as a way to cautiously check if someone was friend and not a hidden foe, it has developed into the universal way in which we greet one another. Of course, shaking hands was one of the very first of the restrictions that was put in place as COVID-19 began its spread across the world. It was replaced with elbow touches or just waves hello, or even what's called the Wuhan dance, touching one another's feet while jumping around. Greeting people with a handshake or a hug is so much a part of the way that we live our lives that it is still challenging to remember to catch yourself from doing this. Only this week I was introduced to someone new in a professional setting and I just automatically went to shake her hand. I was embarrassed at my forgetfulness, but I was really excited to welcome this person into our community. So I was sad that I couldn't do this with touch and affection. Welcoming though is more than a greeting. When we welcome people into our homes, we offer hospitality and comfort we offer food and drink and a seat at the table with us. But I think there's a difference between welcoming people we know well and welcoming someone that we don't. The context usually determines whether we feel comfortable or perhaps a little uncomfortable. In professional settings, in our work, we welcome new colleagues or in families we welcome new people usually introduced by someone else that we know, someone that we trust, and therefore the welcome is easier. We feel safe and are interested to get to know that person. But what does our welcome look like in more challenging settings? New people at church don't often feel the welcome that we would like to give. 
Welcoming a stranger is harder. There is an element of risk when we know nothing about the person in front of us. And we often make judgments about them from those first impressions, what they look like, how they might be behaving before we even speak to them. When we really think about it, it probably isn't the sort of welcome that we would want to give, but it is a reality of our human nature that fear can often be our first reaction or response. Some people are more comfortable in new social settings than others, and that too is part of the diversity of human life. I am less comfortable around strangers than around people that I know. But does this have to be the way? Or can we be more intentional in ways to overcome our fears? Is welcoming just about the greeting or even the following hospitality? For me, I think being truly welcoming is more about what is inside of us than about what we do. It is about growing, growing ourselves, our hearts, our ideas and the love within us that then pours out of us into our acts of welcome. We need to stretch ourselves to welcoming people that we don't know, people who are different from us. Our lives are enriched so much more when we do this. So what does our welcome truly look like from an outsider's perspective? And what impact does it have on each of us? In reading the Gospel reading, it brought to mind that last weekend in the United Nations calendar, we acknowledged World Refugee Day. And the theme for this year is every action counts. The world is witnessing the highest levels of displacement on record. There are 70.8 million people around the world who have been forced from their homes due to conflict and persecution. And these figures are the records at the end of 2018. There are nearly 30 million refugees, over half of whom are under the age of 18. Then there are also millions of stateless people people who have been denied a nationality and access to basic rights such as education, healthcare, employment and freedom of movement. What does our welcome to refugees look like? What does our welcome to Indigenous Australians look like at the moment? It is not just about our actions when we come across someone new, whether that be at church, at work or in the street. Our welcome is about our attitudes towards people as well. Because we say so much more through our nonverbal responses than we do with our words. And this comes from our heart, from our beliefs and our opinions, and our core understanding of how we value human life, all life equally. For me, Jesus' message of welcome is really about acceptance and action. If we take these few verses and add to them the core teachings within the Gospels, we get a greater understanding of what Jesus is saying. When we welcome others, we welcome God. So who are the little ones that Jesus is talking about? They are the Samaritans. They are the people that you don't really want to associate with. They are the refugee, the stranger, the one who is different from you, the one for whom it might be challenging for us to welcome. That is what Jesus asks of us. The psalmist laments how long, and I think we also join in that lament. How long until we can shake hands and greet people with a hug? How long until life gets back to normal? My hope and prayer is that life never gets back to normal, that through this crisis we can become more, that we can become better at our welcome and our acceptance, that we can grow and learn and be guided by the gospel message of love. How will you do this? 
What will each one of us do to be more welcoming? Not just when the doors of our churches are reopened, but everywhere we go. How will we share the welcome that God has given us through Jesus Christ with others? And not just our friends and family, but the stranger, the lost, the lonely, the hurt and the oppressed. Who will you give a cup of water to? A cup that will bring life, welcome, wholeness and love. In the name of God. Amen. Please join with me as we say together the song of Zechariah, the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David, through the holy prophets God promised of old, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Please join with me as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join with me as we sing together, Take Up Your Cross. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, show us your mercy, and grant us your salvation. Keep our nation under your care, and guide us in justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and make your chosen people joyful. Lord, save your people, and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for you are our help and strength. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. O God, your Son has taught us that those who give a cup of water in his name will not lose their reward. Open our hearts to the needs of your children, and in all things make us obedient to your will, so that in faith we may receive your gracious gift eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, the author and lover of peace, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend your servants in all assaults of our enemies, that surely trusting in your defence we may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, 
We thank you for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us by your mighty power and grant that we, falling into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but lead and govern us in all things, that we may always do what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bring our prayer and the needs of the world before God. Lord, hear us, we pray. Kyrie, Kyrie, Eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, Eleison. Loving and gracious God, we pray for the Church. We pray for members of the Church throughout the world. And especially we pray today for the United Church of North India, for Prem Chand Singh, their moderator, and Bishop of Jabalpur. In our diocese, we pray for the parish of Harvey Bay, for Greg Lomo, and for all who are engaged in ministry and the life of the church there. And among the caring agencies, we pray for Anglicare Southern Queensland, community aged and disability care across our western region. Lord, hear us, we pray. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. We pray for our church community, for all of those who are engaged in our life together. We pray for those who are part of providing the support for our community whose contribution is not necessarily always seen. We pray for those who work behind the scenes, helping to be able to prepare our places of worship, to engage in that connection with the wider community. We thank you for the ways in which we are so richly blessed by our life together. Lord, hear us, we pray. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. Lord, we pray for the community around us, for all of those who are feeling anxious as we approach a time of opening up and reintegrating together as community. We pray especially for those who have lost their jobs or for whom their situations in life have changed radically. We thank you for the many opportunities for support which have been offered and pray that we may continue to care for one another and especially for those who are most vulnerable among us. Lord, hear us, we pray. Kyrie, Kyrie, Eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, Eleison. Lord, we bring before you all of those who have asked for our prayers and those we have offered to pray for. We pray for Edna and Norm, for Pat and Terry, for John and Bill, for Irene and Barbara, for Elizabeth and Andrea, for Susie and Anne, for Shan and Sharon and Cabs, for all of those who we hold in our hearts. Especially we pray for those who are grieving, for Jennifer and Roger and all of their family, for Ron and Shirley, for many others who are around us. Lord, hear us, we pray. Kyrie, Kyrie, Eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, Eleison. Lord, you have given us grace to agree in these our prayers, and you have promised that when two or three ask together in your name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, Lord, our desires and prayers as may be best for us. Grant us in this life knowledge of your truth 
and in the age to come, life eternal. Amen. Amen. Almighty God and merciful Father, we give you hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless you for our creation and preservation and all the blessings of this life, and, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may be truly thankful and that we may praise you not only with our lips but in our lives, serving you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please join together with me in the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for being here together with us in worship. If you would like to join us to be present when we pray together, please register at our parish office by Thursday each week. If you would like to be part of a conversation about the sermons with the preacher each week, please also register with our parish office and we can send out to you the link to be able to do that. Thank you to all of those who have been part of this service, for Peter and Joy for their music, for Riley for putting together the compilation of our video, for everybody who has been part of making possible what we do here in this way. Please join with me now as we sing our final hymn, All My Hope on God is Founded.
Thank you for being here. If this time of worship together has raised any questions or opportunities for you, please let us know. Please contact our parish office. If there is any way in which we can help you, both practically as well as along your journey with God, then please let us know. Please contact our parish office if there are any questions or if you would like to find out more about seeking God in your life. Please come and be with us again as we continue in worship together.